All right, so the next assignment, this is uh, screencast two. All right, so this is screencast two of, uh, of this evening's screencast, and it's going to be about the Java project. So uh, your next assignment, your next big assignment is going to be to design and develop a job aid and then write a report about it. And we're going to uh, talk today about how you should be doing that. So first, we have kind of an overview flow chart here, nice little job aid, right? Uh, with has the, the different steps involved. And of course, this is determining that, um, this is assuming that the job aid has already been determined to the uh, to be the appropriate solution to the problem and, and your uh, performance analysis you know was being pushed in that direction and I'll be finishing those up in the next couple of days to to get the that feedback back to you to make sure you're on the the right the right uh, the right way there so <clears throat> the first step is to clarify the problem to be solved uh, and so that's that's what you want to you know off the bat you want to make sure what you're doing is very clear and you know the direction that you want to go in so uh, identify the problem you did a needs assessment by getting the answers of the following. What's the, well, you need to do a needs assessment, excuse me, by getting the answers of the following. What's the best way of doing the task? What are the common errors made by users? And what kind and level of help is needed by the users? So that's an important piece uh, to make sure you have determined those items. Um, to answer these questions, uh, collect information three ways through observations. This should be emphasized when the job or task is observable. Uh, through interviews, use this technique when the job relies on mental processes such as decision making, or by performing the task itself. So that means you, you get a deeper understanding of what the process involves. And if when possible, do all of them. So if you can, if you can uh, uh, go through this, uh, each one of these, that would be ideal. Once you collect the information to break the job task or process into smaller steps, because that's really what you do, you want to take something that's larger and, and break it down into smaller pieces. Uh, then you can you can use your data collection should follow the natural progression of the job task. Uh, think about what a person does before, during, and after. Okay, what's the setup? What are the steps to make it happen? And when you're done, what's next? All right. So, <clears throat> step two is choose the format and medium. Who will be using the the job aid? Uh, how much experience do they have with the job aid? What is the user's ability to read or understand English? That's very important, right? Uh, and what kind of documentation is familiar to the user and what does the user want to perform? And, and I, I want to, you know, the type of documentation that's familiar to the user is, is a, big, uh, a big consideration. So as we're moving into an era that was mostly paper-based, from a, an era that was mostly paper-based into a digital era, uh, there's, there's a transition going on. I mean, one of the ways that I really learn a lot of new things these days is through videos, you know, whether it's YouTube or whether it's lynda.com or other things, I um, will research and find how to do things via video. But what I found is the teachers that I work with in my district are not. And so uh, they are not video literate as far as enhancing their own learning. So I have uh, um, been working with them to kind of build up that type of skill. So just, just something, something to think about. Um, now you have to look at what is the working environment, uh, you know, and think about the different environments. A plumber under a sink is going to need something different than a technician working in the dark, a secretary at a computer, a fast food employee who's expected to work quickly, uh, or an elementary student who's visiting a computer lab. So you got to know who your audience is and and what they're what they're going to be doing. Okay, step three: prepare a draft of the jo of the job aid. So you've kind of set up what needs to happen. In step one, step two, you're figuring out the environment and the type of, uh, and the, the medium, let's say, of, of the job aid. Now you're going to make a draft. So using that information, uh, you're going to break each major task and the smaller ones, list it out. Uh, if order is important, make sure you, you include that order. Uh, if the, is, the pro is the process a decision sequence, then list all possible uh, conditions and appropriate uh, responses and then identify any special circumstances or exceptions. Things that might derail you know, a simple step-by-step -step job aid or uh, the listing of information, however it's going to look. So if there's something obvious that needs to be derailed, can you address it? Uh, you need to decide if you can address it or not. Then you want to develop a rough draft using the chosen format. Uh, then you want to clean up the draft, eliminate extra words, combine ideas that belong together, eliminate ideas that are ambiguous. Of course, you want to be very clear you don't want to leave anything open for interpretation. 
So you want to just be, you know, un unless that's part of the, the task itself where they need to interpret something, but generally you don't want to leave, uh, if, if, if it's ambiguous and, and open for someone to uh, take it a different way, then, then that's, not going to, that's not going to work for you. Uh, use an appropriate title. It should say how, the, uh, how it aids the users. So how to print a report in EduStar, ways to deal with difficult students, using styles in Microsoft Word. Mine are always, I do lots of, uh, lots of these and it's, you know, how to format a Google Doc or how to share a Google Doc or whatever it happens to be. I, I try to be as specific as possible. Then you construct sentences that are clear and direct, lead with action verbs. So launch Internet Explorer, push the button two times, use the, use, use the user's vocabulary um, that you're doing this as well. So if you're, if you're aiming something at, uh, let's say you're a teacher and you're aiming something at first or second graders or even fourth or fifth graders, you shouldn't be using jargon, you shouldn't be using, you know, adult vocabulary because then you'll speak over, you'll speak over their heads uh, and they won't, won't understand it. Um, you know, if you're going to be using specific words that are, you know, jargon, let's say, it needs to be, make sure your audience understands that jargon instead of going, going like, okay, what's a wiki? You know, and, and someone has no idea what a wiki is. So that's important to, uh, to consider as well. Your audience needs to uh, understand what you're saying. Then you're going to prepare, excuse me, then you're going to provide examples when appropriate. Emphasize the action, but don't ignore the why. Present the information in small bits. Uh, make use of text, graphs, headers, and other techniques to draw the, the readers in. So uh, it can be diagrams of what's going on. Uh, it can be anything that, to help emphasize the point that, that you have there. Step four is to pilot the job aid. It's really important that, uh, that someone test it out, okay? Uh, and so you and you want to you want to have people do it, and ideally it's those people who are going to be using it. But if the, you don't have them available, you use who you have available, and ideally they're going to be able to give you feedback um, as if they were taking on the role of of someone who is is one of the the optimal users. <clears throat> so I have a list of questions here from the reading. Do you have all? Do you have any questions? What were you unsure of at any time? Were there steps that were harder harder to follow than others? Was it difficult and, and on and on? So you would want to ask all those people and, and potentially as they're going through the job aid, they could be taking notes as far as what they, you know, any questions they had uh, or anything along those lines. Step five, make revisions to the job aid based upon uh, the user testing and test again. So you want to, uh, you know, once you've made, made the changes, have the, the same person or a different person uh, go through it so you know uh, what you, um, you know, uh, that you make sure you've addressed the any issues you had in the first time around. Uh, step six, manage the job aid. Uh, and so it needs to be integrated, okay, into that work environment to be successful. So you want to make sure it is put in a place that's uh, <clears throat> in an environment in place that uh, uh, makes it useful. So if you, uh, if you know, can imagine if it's at someone's workstation, or maybe it's uh, and something that's a digital version, but the link needs to be clearly identified and labeled and and uh, you know maybe next to where they're going to do the task or the job, you know if you're having a student do something in let's say Google Drawing and you are uh, giving a job aid on Google Drawing, you know you have it in the directions in the flow of, of what's going on, so they're able to uh, they're able to do that. Okay, and so the top ten parts of your job aid report, okay. Uh, your introduction. Okay, so now we're moving on to that was a job aid. Okay, we talked about. Now we're moving on to the the report. Uh, the one is introduction, uh, analysis techniques, objectives, job aid media, design, the pilot test, interpretations and revisions, the solution system, the writing, and the complexity. And and um, you know, obviously, you may have a simple solution. You you may have a job aid that is more simple than than other people's just because that's what. That's what the demand was as far as what you, you know, after you did your performance analysis and, and you had a, a specific need there. So the complexity piece is, is, uh, is, you know, I'll call that a little bit of a variable as far as, uh, as, far as the, if the final product. But what I'm talking about complexity there is uh, that you've thought through uh, this process um, and that you document it in your job aid report. So if I were to, uh-oh. I'm going to go to the website here. Go to the assignments. So, 
So on the assignment, there's uh, a few things. One is the job aid description and rubric. This is a document like the performance analysis that has kind of the overview of, of what needs to happen in the report. So remember the job aid is the job aid itself and then a report about the process of completing the job aid. And it has uh, the formatting guidelines, everything like that. Uh, and then it has the rubric of, for each of the components. Uh, introduction, so here's the first three are for the report, introduction, analysis, techniques, objectives, and then the job aid itself. And the job aid can take any any number of format from uh, from a, a screencast video to a you know a Word document, a Google document uh, that has that has screenshots. You you want to make it a little bit more finished of a product, so so you want to uh, do your best to design it in a way with the skills that you have uh, that is make it presentable. Okay, and if you are going to make a video, then um, you want to use a video tool like Camtasia, and, and actually we'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a proceeding week um, as far as the format it can potentially take. But you should be maybe have an idea of, of what, you want it to, uh, what you want it to look like. Going back to assignments, one more. There is uh, the project submission checklist. So here are some things for uh, tips for writing, uh, and you want to make sure you kind of uh, review this okay make sure uh, all general statements are supported with with data uh, you want to make sure that uh, you don't have just big generalities without anything that to back it up or to fall into more specifics uh, use the organization in the rubric uh, the length no more than three pages uh, numbers okay uh, a few other things in here so some writing things so you want to make sure that uh, uh, you look at this, this is uh, falling within APA guidelines as far as uh, the writing is concerned. And then last, there are a, uh, a number of examples here. So certainly you want to go through the examples because they have the task itself and then at the end it has, uh, it has the job aid. So here is, uh, here is one of the job aids for this and, and of course uh, you're going to give me a higher res version. That one is just, uh, oh, okay, here it is. Uh, you want to give me the, uh, or this is the draft version, the original draft, and then this was the completed one. And you'll be giving me the higher res version in one way or another through, through Google Drive probably where you can upload a PDF or do it within Google Drawing or anything like that. And again, we'll talk about the format of that at a uh, next week or the week after. All right, so that is the uh, gist of the project itself. I hope uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, email me. I am, uh, I'm heading out of town uh, tomorrow, and, but I'll have my phone. I'll check email uh, as often as I can. And um, the next week I'm heading out of town as well, but I still intend to hold class because I'll have Wi-Fi where I'm at uh, on uh, next Tuesday. So if you have any questions, email me. Otherwise, uh, have a great week, and we will uh, we'll, uh, get in touch soon. And there will be one more screencast that has a few uh, questions on the exam and what you need to, what you will be doing to make up the objective questions if you wanted to do that. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great week.